Well, Merry Christmas from Sierra Railway 1929. Uh, well, here's my special Christmas edition of Word in the Shop. Um, it's, all actually, it's actually a little late, you know, being recorded and uploaded. Uh, I meant to do it earlier today, but I didn't have enough done to show you, so it wasn't really worth uh, doing a video until now. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to show you all the things that I've worked on in the last couple weeks. Um, first off, uh, I mentioned in the last one in the shop that number three was now equipped with DCC. Uh, unfortunately, that decoder shorted out because since she was just barely completed at the time of that uh, video, uh, yeah, I didn't have chance. I didn't have a chance to go and you know get all the wires covered up. You know there were some exposed uh, parts here and there. Uh, so some of those wires touched each other that weren't supposed to, shorted a decoder out, fried it, and she would only go in reverse, you know. So that decoder's no good anymore. I'm going to get another one. It's only $30. It's not that bad. Um, and I have an anti-short uh, chip that I'm going to put in um, with the new decoder, so I won't have that problem again. But uh, other than that, I rewired the engine so that she could run again you know on normal DC and uh, yep yeah. I'll show you how she runs a little later but uh, yeah so here's number three I know it's kinda dark let me move the light over here okay so you can see the CR railway lettering on the tender finally did that that's um, that's done by stencil. The letter, the lettering, and the numbers um, are all hand painted through stencils. You know, and very very careful brush painting. I don't know if you can see it. it might be a little too dark, but um, the steps, both rear steps on the tender, are in place. Uh, the front ones I need to actually make up. I never end up getting the chance to put those on. But uh, yeah, I'm working on that. I still need to add Mike's ladder. That's my nickname for the ladder on the rear of the tender because I pointed out the ladder should be on the left side when they restored number three. So I, that's what I call it. Um, and then you've got to add the glad hand on the rear of the tender. Yeah, a whole bunch of other details. But once the tender is all detailed, it's going to look a hell of a lot better. Um, and really, nothing has been going on with the locomotive except lubrication and tweaks here and there to keep it running. Uh, i got to have it running for uh, New Year's as I'm taking it over to Black Diamond Lines um, and Antioch, their model railroad club over there. So, yeah. And... What I was working on today was this switch over here. It is a number six turnout um, that I hand laid uh, using my special templates. Let me see if I can find the one that I used to build it. This one from handlaidtracks.com. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different types of tracks, you know, turnouts, crossovers, Ys, you know and all sorts of things. They even have dual gauge. They have different scales too. I would highly suggest checking it out. Uh, I would go to, uh, if you go to their website, print, uh, check out printable track templates. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's what I was working on today. It took me a good hour and a half to build because it's, for me, I just got to cut all the ties out, you know, ahead of time. Then I gotta tape each one down piece by piece. Then you gotta cut the rails and you gotta glue it down. Then you gotta get it off the template, which is a little harder to do. Um, anyway, uh, this one, this switch actually replaced that switch back there. It was a number five, and I guess number three didn't take too well to that uh, to running over it in a certain direction. So I replaced it with a number six turnout. It worked pretty well it's not that much bigger you know it has a has less of a sharp curve and uh, here's my 
prototype caboose number four, number 04 anyway. Uh, I'm going to be making these kits uh, eventually. You know, i got to get the brake rigging done. I'm actually going to take it to uh, get worked on. I'm going to take the car to a friend's house and he's going to help me uh, make the brake rigging on Thursday. So, uh, yeah, once I get the prototype done, then I will start making all the changes to the drawings for cutting the kits out and everything. And then I'll start, um, then I'll announce when they'll be released. So keep keep that in mind. Check out my CRO in 1929 Facebook page and I have updates on that and the other stuff going around the layout from time to time. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, not much here on Sonora really. I put the uh, I put the depot mock-up back in place because it was it's a centerpiece of the layout, the Sonora Depot. Even if it's a bad mock-up, you know, it's really getting screwed up. I figured I may as well have something to nothing, so I'm actually going to start working on a a uh, fully detailed Sonora Depot pretty soon. I still gotta lay that siding track that runs along the main there. Uh, I believe I got it to hold up to four cars uh, with clearing, uh, with proper clearance. Um, but yeah, and uh, now that I have more wood for ties, I'm going to build the switch that goes right here, and that'll go over to that'll go over back behind the Sonora Depot to the freight house, and then that's when the real switching comes in. Um, yeah, and if you look at it, this is only about a foot and a half length from the end of the module to that switch, and uh, yeah, getting, if I put another switch in here, I'll only have maybe, just maybe a locomotive's length of clearance to get onto the, the uh, freight house lead. So I think I'm going to have to extend the module again about a foot so that I'll have enough room uh, you know to get the track all done and everything. But uh, yeah it's coming along and it's making me a lot happier than the old module did because I just figured out once I figure out something's not scale, it just eats away at me until I can't bear it anymore and I have to do something like this, rip all the old track off and put new track down. But it's for the better. Um, I think it's turned out pretty well. So, yeah, here is the standard module. I actually cleared it off after the last word in the shop, but uh, nothing stays clean around here. Uh, I'm actually going to have to clear it off again this week because i got to take it down to the wood shop at my school so I can straighten the frame out because it's pretty wavy. Uh, it's not level at all and I can't have track down on that and run a train properly. So I'm going to take it to the wood shop. I'm going to take it to the wood shop to get fixed and yeah. Really not much else to report. But yeah, the major thing is number three is running. She'll be running again for quite a while, hopefully. Uh, and I'll be, you know, finally get into details I'll put back on. And I'm going to be extremely careful with this thing, you know, from now on. And uh, as a matter of fact, once I get to a certain stopping point, the engine, I'm just going to put her away, going to put her in a box. She's not going to get touched. You know, until I get some of my other stuff done, and then I can have her and a whole bunch of my other Sierra engines running together. You know, so I gotta keep her safe until that time comes. But for now, she's the only operable Sierra 1929 engine, so I gotta keep her out and about, pulling the trains. So, so yeah, uh, I guess that's about it. Um, happy holidays, guys! Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and. I will see you at Black Diamond. And don't forget, CRO1929 on Facebook. Alright, see you later.